Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at geometric proof and we're going to look at how to use congruent triangle proof in order to solve these geometric problems. So we're going to be looking at throughout the video how to write this, how to use three-part proof and how to actually show that particular triangles are congruent within these geometric shapes. So we're going to be looking at this question to start with but we are going to have a look at quite a lot of different problems throughout this video. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so looking at our first question. Now it says here that A, B, C, D is a rhombus, and you can see that A to B to C to D, and completing the shape there makes our rhombus. It says that M and N are points on the line B, D, such that D to M and N to B, which we can see here, D to M and N to B are equal lengths. It then says prove that triangle D, M, C is congruent to the triangle B, N, C. So if we highlight those triangles, DMC is this triangle here, and the other triangle that we are looking at is just here, BNC. So these are the two triangles that we are trying to show that are congruent. So when we're looking at congruent triangle proof, we are going to have to think about our congruent triangle rules. So again, I will link the video for that in the description if you haven't seen it already, but that is going to be very important for all of these geometric proof questions. So for the first thing then, now often something is given to us in the question and the first line tells us that it's a rhombus and we know that when it comes to a rhombus all of the sides are the same length. So if we look at these two triangles can we apply anything from that towards our proof? And the answer is yes. We have the line B to C and we have the line D to C which are the same length as it's a rhombus. So we can actually say that as one of our first points. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bullet point them. So for my first bullet point, I am going to say that B to C is equal to D to C, and we give a reason for that. So the reason being is that sides of the rhombus are equal. Okay, so we can say the sides of a rhombus are equal. There we go. Now, that, if we are doing our thinking back to our congruent triangle proof, that is a side. So you can either write that down next to it, or you can just remember that that is a side. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a bracket the letter S just to remind myself that I have already proved one of the sides. Next, look at our question. Now, we were told as well in the question that D to M was equal to N to B. And that's very nice because that is one of our sides on both of those triangles. And if I highlight those with two lines, we've got this, this line here and we've also got this line here. And it says to us in the question that they are equal and that is another side within our triangles. So I would give another bullet point here and I would say D to M is equal to N to B and for that one there it's quite as simple as just saying it's given to us in the question so I would just say given in question there we go and that is also a side so that is a nice easy explanation as it is already given to us so I would just again put next to that 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 is a side Obviously, I'm going to run out of some space here, so I'm going to move my proof onto the right. Um, but let's have a look at proving something else. So we've proved two sides, and it's always normally the last one, which is the hardest to find. So we have to think about in this question, how can we find anything else? Now I'm going to get rid of what we've drawn so far so that we can ha maybe have a look at the larger picture. Because the other side doesn't look like that was very easy for us to prove. We've got that this line here will need to be equal to this line here but there's nothing in the question that actually dictates that for us. So let's have a look at maybe one of the angles. So we have this angle here and this angle here. There's, no, there's nothing that we could use to prove that. We have this angle here and this angle here, but again, there's nothing we can use to prove that. But if we think about the larger triangle that we can see, which you can see going from here to here to here, that is actually an isosceles triangle, which we've already proved because we said that this line was the same as this one, then therefore that would have to be an isosceles. And we know that when it comes to an isosceles, the base angles are equal. 
So actually looking outside of this picture and, and sort of the larger triangle in the, in the picture there, we can actually determine that those angles are equal. So I could write here the angle, and again we're going to use the three letters for that angle there. So for the bottom one, I could say MDC, angle MDC is equal to angle and the one at the top there, I would say NBC, or any arrangement of those, as long as B is in the middle. And the reason behind that is because base angles in an isosceles are equal. Okay, so I would give my reason. Base angles in an isosceles are equal. And that is an angle. So there we go, I have another bit of my proof, I'm going to put that just there, and that is an angle. So if we get rid of the rest of that diagram, let's have a look at what we have. So for each triangle, we proved that this side was equal, we proved that this side was equal, and we proved that the angle between them was in fact equal for both of them. So for my proof for this one, I would say, and this is the final line, and I'm just going to use this symbol for therefore, I would say therefore, and in the question, it's a DMC, so triangle DMC is equal to triangle BNC. Again, just getting these words from the question. Okay, and I would give my reason, and my congruent triangle proof here is side, angle, side. And I just have to put side, angle, side. But you could write some more words there. You could say because of the side, angle, side proof. So there we go, we had three points. We had the first one showing that two sides were equal, the second one showing two sides were equal, the third one there showing that angles were equal, and then we had our conclusion using the side angle side rule. So as you can see, these questions are quite tricky. People tend to find these quite difficult because you, if you actually have to really think about how to find particular sides or particular angles and thinking about all these other elements of maths, as you've seen there, thinking about rhombuses and thinking about isosceles triangles. And every question can have something different within it. So that's our first one. And I've got a question for you to have a go at to see if you can try and figure one of these out. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so here's your question. So pause the video there and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Okay, so this question says that this is a parallelogram. It says E is the point where the diagonals meet, and we can see that in the center, and we want to prove that this triangle here, ABE, is congruent to the triangle at the bottom there, which is CDE. So we're gonna think about, again, if this is a parallelogram, what does that tell us straight away? Well, we know that opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. So this side in the triangle and this side in the triangle are going to be equal. So we would say that the side AB is equal to the side CD. And the reason for that, we would say that opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. So opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. So that has proved a side. And now we're going to have a look to see if we can prove anything else. So again, thinking about this shape, can we prove any of the other sides? So if we get rid of that, let's have a think. Well, there's nothing that says that this side and this side are definitely equal. Now, to be fair, the crossovers there do actually meet at equal points, but there is other ways that you could go about proving this, because we know that the side lengths in a, uh, that are opposite in a parallelogram are parallel. That's why it's called a parallelogram. So if we look, we can actually create some parallel lines. We have the line AB and the line DC, and they are connected via one of these crossover lines. And this little crossover line here means that we are creating alternate angles. So we know that these are alternate angles that are within each of the triangles. So we could definitely go for an angle, which is probably a little bit easier here. So we can say that the angle A, B, D, and you could write angle A, B, D, or we could put the little angle symbol above there, is equal to the angle B, D, C. And again, you could amend the angles because you could always start again. You could go from A to B to E, and then from E to D to C. So you could write these angles slightly differently to me. But I've gone for the full length of the line. 
So angle ABD is equal to angle BDC because alternate angles are equal. There we go, so alternate angles are equal. And it's very important that you write down all of your reasons for these questions. And again, that is gonna give us an angle. We can actually now flip that line and we can take it the other way. Because if I go down this way instead, again, I've created another alternate angle. I've made an alternate angle here and I've made an alternate angle here. And that, when we write it, is gonna show that we have two angles either side of these sides. So for my third bit of proof here, I would say angle, and we're looking at these purple angles now, so angle B, A, C is equal to the angle A, C, D. And again, we would give the same reason, alternate angles are equal. There we go, and that is another angle. So thinking about what we have now, we have got a side, and we have got two angles, and the side is between the two angles. So again, I would finish off the proof here saying, therefore, uh, and we get this from the question, at triangle A, B, E is equal to triangle, oh, didn't mean to write an A then, equal to triangle C, D, E, and the reason here, and let's just think about this, we have a side in between two angles, so A, S, A. And there we go, that would be the final part of our proof. So there we go, that's another question. Let's have a look at something ever so slightly different. And again, you're gonna be able to have a practice. Okay, so we have a slightly different question here because we have some overlapping triangles. So it says in the diagram below that PQ is equal to PR. So we know that this length here is equal to this length here. So therefore, straight away, we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So we'll think about that later. It says S in the, is the midpoint of PQ, so if S is the midpoint of PQ, this line here is the same length as this line here, and that is going to apply on the same side as this length here is the same length as this length here. So again, we'll think about that in just a second. It also so it then says prove that triangle QTR is congruent to triangle RSQ. So Q to T to R is this triangle just here. And overlapping that is the other triangle where we have RSQ, and R to S to Q is just there. So as you can see, they overlap, but hopefully you can see them relatively clearly, and we're gonna have a go at tr proving this one. So to start with, can we see anything that's the same in both? And I think personally, the easiest bit to see here is that they both have the same base length. As they both share the same line, that's an easy bit of proof for us to say. So for the first one, I would say QR is the same length in both. There we go, so that's a nice easy one. Same length in both, and that has already proved a side. So we've got our first side proved. Let's think about what else we could prove. Well, the first, another thing that we mentioned was the fact that this line here was the same length as this line here, as it says that that was a midpoint. And we know that because it's an isosceles, if it's a midpoint on both, then both halves must be the same length on either side. So I could also say, and this is a relatively nice one on this one as well, that Q to S is equal to T to R and we just need to think about how we would give our reason because both lengths are the same and both are midpoints, okay? Both, or halves I could say, both halves of um, the same length side. And you could write that in different ways, but I've just tried to write it in an obvious way there. So both halves of the same length of side. And again, that is a side. So we've got two sides already. We just need to think about what else we can find. And again, it goes back to thinking about the fact that it's, that it's an isosceles. We know if this is an isosceles, where these two lengths are the same length, we know that in an isosceles, base angles are equal, as we have the, our isosceles triangle. So for the final one there, I could also say that the angles there are the same as it's an isosceles triangle. So I can say that angle, and what is it, P, Q, R, P, Q, R is equal to P, R, Q. There we go. 
and those angles are going to be equal. Let's just get rid of that. That doesn't quite go over the R there. There we go, P, R, Q. So they are equal because base angles in an isosceles are equal. And it's quite awkward having to write it all, but very important that you write it all down. So base angles in an isosceles are equal. So we've got our three points there, that was another angle. So just thinking about what we have, we have an angle in between two side lengths. So therefore, triangle QTR is equal to triangle RSQ. And our reason there is because we have an angle in between two sides. So that is going to be SAS. And there we go, that finishes off our question. Right, let's have a look at one for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your question. Before you get started though, just thought we'd talk through it. It says that it's a quadrilateral. It says that the length A to B, this length here, is the same as C to D. So you can draw those in and we could say that these are the same length. It also says that angle ABC is equal to angle BCD. So ABC is equal to this angle BCD and it wants you to prove that A to C is equal to B to D. So for this one here, you actually have to draw the line in yourself. So you're going to have to draw these little crossover lines, and we're going to prove that those lines are equal. Not forgetting that we have some triangles within there, and if we prove that they're congruent, therefore the final line would have to be equal. So we're not using the fact that they're equal, but we are going to prove that they're equal. So have a go at this question, pause the video, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so let's have a look at this one then. Now if we look at the crossovers there, we have two triangles. We've got a triangle here, and we've also got a triangle down the bottom, just here. There we go. Or you could look at it the other way around, because actually we also have a triangle at the top here, and we have another triangle at the top, just here. So I'm going to look at those triangles at the top and just see if we can do any proof using those as well. So for this one here, if we use those triangles at the top, and I'll highlight one of them, well, we can see that the line B to D is the same in both. So we've got B to D is the same in both, and that is a side. So if B to D is the same in both, we have also already got one of our bits of proofs, and I'm just going to put that that's a side. We then also have on both of those, the lines that I've already put the arrow on, and that was given to us in the question, and that is that A to B is equal to C to D. So I can write that one down as well. I can say that A to B is equal to C to D, and that is given in the question. And it's always very nice when you have one that is given in the question. You don't even have to think about the reasons. And again, that is another side. What else do we have then? Because we have that we've got one side here and we've got the other side. So if we get rid of one of these lines and just have a look maybe at that particular triangle, well in between those two sides we were also told in the question that the angle there, and it's written just here, is the same as the other angle. So we know that the angle in between them is also the same. So we can say here, and again this is really nice because it is given to us in the question, and that is the angle ABC is equal to angle BCD and again my reason there given in the question there we go and that is an angle so this is a really nice question because a lot of the information is given to you and again we'll just write down that that's an angle so that we can finish off our proof so we can say therefore AC has to be equal to BD there we go, because the triangles are congruent. So we would say because triangle ABC is equal to triangle, and the other triangle there, even though I've got rid of the line now, put that back in, is equal to triangle BCD. And the reason there is because that they were SAS triangles. Okay, we had the angle in between the two sides. 
So there we go, that's how we go about doing these geometric proofs using congruent triangles. Now what we're going to have a look at is proving some of these congruent triangles within circles and potentially having to use circle theorems. So let's have a look at one of those now. Okay, so this is probably the hardest question out of the bunch. Now as you can see we have a circle and inside that we have a quadrilateral and some overlapping lines. So you're also going to have to think about circle theorems for this question. So if you are unsure on your circle theorems then definitely go and check out that video first and then come back to this question. So it says here that we have the circle drawn and we've got the four points on the circumference. It says that AEC and BED are straight lines. It says that triangle AED is an equilateral, which we can see just here, A to E to D, so we may have to use that at some point. And then it also tells us uh, in the final part here, we want to prove that ABC is congruent to DCB. So if we highlight those triangles, we have A to B to C, which is this triangle here. And then I'm going to draw over it in pen, in pen instead, and that is D to C to B. So this triangle just here. Now if we look at these two triangles individually then, let's think about if there's anything easy that we can identify straight away. And that is that the line B to C is the same in both. So we're going to first write that as that's our easy one here. So our first point is that B to C is the same length in both. There we go, and that is our first one. Now we're probably going to have to start thinking about some circle theorems to get some of our other pieces. Now there are lots of different ways to answer this question, so I'm only going to run through one method, but you, perhaps you can think about other ways to solve this as well. Now the next thing that I notice is that we have one of our circle theorems involved. So if I get rid of this for the moment and we'll think about the circle theorem that I've spotted, and that is that angles in the same segment are equal. If we go from point B up to the angle A and back down to C, we create this angle just here. And if we go from B up to D and back down to angle C, we also create this angle just here. And that is using angles in the same segment. So we can use that circle theorem to identify one of the angles that's the same. So we can say angle, and let's just think about that, it's angle B, A, C and that is equal to angle B, D, C. And we could say because angles in the same segment are equal. There we go, and that is one of our circle theorems. So angles in the same segment are equal. And that has proved an angle. Now let's think about one of our others. So we've got those angles there. But let's just go back to thinking about our triangles because we had this triangle here and we also had this triangle just here. So we've got the angle and we've got this similar side in both, but we need to find another angle. So can we find it any other way? Now we know that the triangle is an equilateral, it's told us that. So we know that this angle here is 60 degrees, this angle here is 60 degrees, and also that one just at the center is 60 degrees. So can we use angles in the same segment for any of those angles? And the answer is yes. If we get rid of, again, some of these lines, and I draw in for this 60 degrees, it creates that angle just there. And if we go from A down to C, it creates this angle just here. So we know that this angle is equal to this angle, and that is going to be 60 degrees. We also know the same if we were to do that the other way round. So if I was to go up from D to A to create that angle there of 60, we also have the other angle if we go from D to B and then down to C, it also creates this angle of 60. So we know that this is also going to be an equilateral on the other side and it matches this angle of 60. So does that fall within our triangles? If it does, then we've got another angle there. So if we draw them back in, A to B to C was this triangle here and you can see we have that 60 degrees just in the bottom there, down by C. And if I draw the other one in, which went up from here to here to here, we also have the 60 degrees just in the bottom of that angle. And that is in the top of the red triangle that I've drawn. So both of them have an angle of 60 degrees. So we've proved another angle. So if we give the angles there, that is angle D, B, C, 
which is equal to angle B, and that would be then B, C, A. And both of them are 60 degrees. So again, the reason for that, and that was quite a difficult one to spot, but because both angles in the same segment are equal. And you do have to rewrite it, even though it's the same reason as one of the others. There we go, angles in the same segment are equal. And that has proved another angle. Now, if we think about the proof that I've done here, I have got two angles and a side. Now, the side is not between two of the angles, but again, thinking about congruent triangle proof, if I have proved that I have two angles and a side, the third angle would be the same, and that side would be in between two of the same angles, but we can give this as a AAS triangle. So I would say, therefore, triangle A, B, C, is equal to triangle DCB. And my reason here would it be it is an AAS triangle and therefore they are congruent. Right, so that is using circle theorems. So I've got one question for you to have a go at before we finish. Let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so here's your final question, again using circle theorems, and again this might use another circle theorem that we didn't discuss in the previous question, but pause the video there, have a go at this question, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so we have that AOC and BOD are diameters of a circle, and that's important because we know that there's a circle theorem involved when we have diameters involved. Prove that triangle ABD, and let's highlight that, A to B to D, and triangle DCA are congruent. So D to C, down to A, and there's our overlapping triangles. Now the first thing I think is easy to spot here is that this length is the same in both. So for the first one, we would say that A to D, same length in both. So that has already proved a side. And there we go, we have one of our sides proved. So again, just labeling that as a side. We then have to probably think about some circle theorems. So if we look at this question, can we prove any of the angles using circle theorems? Well, the fact that we had the diameters involved means that these angles here are right angles because angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees. So if angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees, we know that that is a right angled triangle. So I could then say as well, that also the diameters are going to be equal because we know that opposite those right angles, we have the diameters and the diameters are going to be the same length. So I could say here that the length A to C is equal to the length B to D, okay, as diameters are equal lengths. Diameters are equal. And that has also proved another sign. Now, I haven't written that the right way around, so let's just write that again. There we go, diameters are equal, and that has proved another side. Now what else can we find? Because we have that A to C was equal, and we also had that A to D was equal. So if we have a look at the next part of this triangle, there is also another circle theorem involved. And again, this is linking to the previous question, because we have angles in the same segment at C, and we have angles in the same segment just up here at B. So we know that this angle here is the same as this angle here. So I could write that down as well. I can say angle A, C, D is equal to angle A, B, D. And the reason for that would be angles in the same segment are equal. There we go. Now let's just think about this. Did we actually need to give that proof? Because prior to that, we already had, and if we draw this in again, we had this angle here, or this length here was the same, and we also had that the diameters were the same. And because we said that this angle was a right angle, then that meant we already had a right hand, hand, hand hypotenuse side triangle, a right angled hypotenuse side triangle, an RHS triangle. So we didn't really need to go on and use the angles in the same segment. So instead, I could have given the original proof for that first one, which was to say that B 
a d is equal to c d a because angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees. There we go, angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees. So based on that bit of proof uh, where I have my angle, I have a right, right angled hypotenuse side triangle. Because we have the right angle, we have the diameter, which is the hypotenuse, and we have the other side, which is AD. So I can say, therefore, triangle ABD is equal to triangle DCA because we have a right H. S, a right angled hypotenuse side triangle. And there we go, that would finish off our question. So could we have used the angles in the same segment as well? And the answer is yes, we would have had an angle, we would have had the other angle, which is the 90 degrees, if we just highlight these ones, and we would have had one of the sides as well. So we would have had two angles and a side. So as with all, a lot of these different questions, there are different ways of proving it. Although I do think that the proof we did there using the RHS triangle was probably a little bit simpler, but there were other ways to tackle this question. And as with a lot of these, there are sometimes different ways and different proofs to move around the diagram. So there we go. That was an answer for that question. Hopefully you enjoyed this topic. Hopefully that was useful. If it was, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I will see you for the next video.